Welcome to our lecture online. Now we want to explain what we saw in the previous video, but that's going to take a few more videos to do that. We're going to take it one step at a time. In this video, we're going to talk about what we call the state matrix. Here we have the uh, new state of the item we're tracking. Could be a plane, could be a car, could be a rock flying through space. And we want the current condition, which is going to be updated based upon the previous condition of the state, times some matrix A. We're not going to explain that yet. That's the next video plus what we call the control variable matrix, multiply times B. Remember that A and B are simply matrices so that we can turn these into the, the current state or the current position of the, of the object. And of course, we could still have some noise in the process, and so we have to account for that, which we'll attack later. What we want to do here in this video is show you what that state matrix could look like. For example, in a single dimension in the X direction, the state matrix X could simply uh, mean that we know the position or that we're trying to track the position and the velocity of that object only in the X direction. Or we may be tracking something that's falling straight down in the Y direction. So the state matrix in that case would simply be the position and the velocity in the Y direction of that particular object we're trying to track. Of course, satellites and planes, they move in three dimensions. So we need to then express that in three dimensions. In two dimensions, we can have a state matrix that looks like this. We get the position in the x direction, the position in the y direction, the velocity in the x direction, and the velocity in the y direction. But you don't have to write it like this. I've seen it where they have state matrices that look like this. Here they show you the position in the x direction, the velocity in the x direction, the position in the y direction, and the velocity in the y direction. And neither methodologies are perfectly fine, but that means that the, that the matrix A will be different when you express the state matrix like this compared to what this would be when you express the state matrix like that, because then you have to convert from here to there to this matrix in a different methodology, and I'll show you some examples of how that's done for both of these matrices. For an object that's traveling in three dimensions, such as a plane or a satellite, then you need to know the position in the x, the y in the z direction, and the velocity in the x, the y in the z direction. So in this case, you'll have a state matrix with six elements in there. Me personally, I like this methodology better than this methodology, and of course, if you convert this to a three-dimensional uh, state matrix, you could potentially write it like this as well. Right? You could have x and then the velocity in the x direction, y, the velocity in the y direction, z, the velocity in the z direction. But again, my personal preference is to write it like this instead of like that. One of the reasons why I like this format better than this and this format better than that is because I like the format of the matrix that deals with this state than with that format of the state. And you'll see in a little while why it is so. Remember that when we try to track something, we need to keep track of it in terms of the Newton's equations of motion. Remember that we track things according to the equations of kinematics. This is the equation of kinematics in the x direction. We have a similar equation for the y direction and the z direction. Here you can say that the position x is always equal to the previous position x or the initial position x plus the velocity in the x direction times time, the amount of time has, that has elapsed, plus one half times acceleration times the time squared, the amount of time elapsed squared. Also remember that in this particular case, in the Kalman filter, we're going to be dealing with a delta t, a small change in the time elapsed. That is the time elapsed in one cycle, time for one cycle. And so we need to adapt this equation to deal with the case where we just increment the time by just a small amount. So even though we're theoretically doing this when we try to update the state of an object that we're trying to track, we do have to take into account that we're only allowing the time to go forward by a small amount, so we have to adapt how we calculate the new state. The way this works is this part of the state matrix equation where we're trying to update the state, this represents what happens based on position and velocity. So we're going to update this based upon the previous position and its velocity to update its current state. This matrix here deals with the acceleration of the object. The acceleration that's in this equation here, that's going to be updated. We're going to update the current state with the previous state multiplied times a matrix that takes into account its previous position and previous velocity. And then this, which is the matrix for the control variable, in this case the control variable is the acceleration caused by perhaps gravity or perhaps by the engine thrust 
of the, of the engines in the plane, and then we have to adapt, adapt the new position or the new state based upon how it's accelerating in the x, y, and z direction. And then there may be some noise through the, through the um, mechanism of calculating the new state, and then we have to deal with that noise variation there as well. And we'll show you some examples of how to do that. But at least at this point, what I'm hoping is that this X is no longer a mystery to you. The state matrix is simply a matrix that tells you the position and the velocity of an object you're trying to track in perhaps one dimension, two dimensions, or three dimensions. And you can see that there's no particular reason why you can't uh, arrange the particular uh, elements within the matrix the way you like it best. Again, my preference is I like it like this, I like it like that, maybe because I like things ordered in a particular way. Now that you know what that matrix is, now we're going to show you some ex simple examples of how to utilize the state matrix. Again, like I said, we're going to go through this whole process very slowly, one deliberate step at a time, and after a few more videos, you begin to realize, wow, Kalman filtering isn't so bad.